So, you have found my laboratory. Come forward, step inside, and I will show you my gruesome experiments. Do you have the stomach for this kind of work? <laughs> I hope so. It's going to get messy right after the drop. <laughs> Hey there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain. Happy Spooktober, everybody. Woo! <laughs> to start my October-themed crafts, I'm going to create a bloody laboratory. Well, you probably know that from seeing the intro. So let's get to it, shall we? I'm going to use these wooden tiles. You can find the links for those in the description of the video. Their, their build is 6 by 6 inch. They are not quite 6 inch by 6 inch. More like 5 and a half by 5 and a half. Uh, but that's okay. I'll make do. I'm going to take some chipboard, rough up the side, and apply some Eileen's Tacky Glue and really glue it down to these uh, wooden bases. And then I'm going to measure half inch uh, increments on both sides and using this really cool scoring tool. I think it used to be a dental tool of some sort. Maybe it's just a clay sculpting tool. I don't know, but I love that little, uh, the little um, spade a, a bit on the end. And it uh, really, really scores these lines well. I'm going to go back half inch on either side and create like the tiled squares. I really like the standard hospital black and white tile and that's what I'm going for with this project. And then after I get all of the tiles scored out, I'm going to go back in and using a round woodsy, I'm just going to cut a big floor drain. Um, I want, when I when this project is complete, and again, you, you saw the beginning, I want all the blood and, and gore from my uh, evil laboratory tables and instruments and things to be dripping and flowing down the tile floor to uh, a set of grates in the middle of each tile. So after I trace out and, and cut the circle out, I'm going to go back in and, and create a great pattern, cut that out as well. I um, use a little pen to uh, give it the look of bolts around the edges and then I'm just going to white glue the grate down into the center. I have two tiles that I'm going to do this to. Now it's on to the uh, like the not quite hospital bed. What do I want to what am I going to call these operating tables I suppose? That's as good as any description. I'm going to put, uh, cut some more card. I think they're two inches long by about an inch and a half wide, something like that. And I'm going to glue a piece of craft stick along the bottoms. This is kind of uh, going to be like where the uh, where the feet of your of your of the, of the creature or person you're operating on would stand against. And I'm going to thicken the bottom up with a uh, with a woodsy of appropriate size and shape. Then I uh, look at some beads that I have. I've got these really cool uh, long circular ones. I'm going to make it uh, or glue a, a piece of doweling on the end of it and the bead up against the bed and I'm hoping that this will give the bed the look as though it could tilt. So the mad scientist or doctor could then tilt the bed up and back that way he or she because mad scientists could be boys or girls right <laughs> they could uh they could operate on their their victim or or maybe they're helping maybe they're trying to help <laughs> they could operate the, uh, on them in a standing position or or laying flat now i don't actually build in the ability to move these beds back and forth boy that would be really cool Note to self, maybe I should have done that, <laughs> but I did not. So uh, a little super glue or crazy glue on the on the bead there. And this is going to be a really, really weak connection. 
but I'm gonna strengthen the connection with some of these steampunk gears. You can get packages of these gears at Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Uh, they generally are found in the jewelry sections and they just make uh, really cool parts for kind of like these technical type pieces. You can see I've glued on both ends and then I've glued on the middle and this is just gonna give the uh, this very delicate piece a bit more points of uh, of, of glue. Boy, I can't think of the word today. That's all right. Um, and then I was stuck on what I wanted to do with the bases. And then um, I had painted up a bunch of zombies for October uh, and, and this part of the laboratory. And I had a bunch of leftover bases because I use uh, the fender washers as bases for most of my minis. So I thought I'm going to take some of these bases, drill out the center just large enough for the doweling that I used, and they fit really well. Then I'm going to go back to my bead section, back to the gears, and I'm going to create kind of a lever, uh, a, a lever bit where the doctor can control the beds or the operating tables with some levers. Maybe they rotate, maybe they tilt up and down. Uh, maybe the, uh, the entire operating table lifts or, or lowers. You know, I'll, I'll let, uh, let other uh, DMs, GMs, storytellers handle that however they want their, uh, their mad scientist laboratory to work. Uh, as long as you kind of create the, uh, the idea with your pieces, then I think that'll be just fine. In my sketchbook, I had leather straps, but man, oh man, you know how much I love chain. I think it adds so much uh, texture and visual appeal. And I thought, let's, uh, let's use chain to suggest how the uh, patients or victims are held down to the operating table. I start by cutting little notches into the side of the table where I can slip a link in. And if you don't buy that they're welded into the table, this is similar to like a uh, fastening style that I've seen on a lot of big rigs and trucks where it's simply a notch at the side of the bed and then they pull it to a link of chain nice and tight and they just slip it in there. So I think if, even if you don't buy that these chains are welded to the side of the table and that's where they are stuck, I think it still, um, still passes the, the eye test and that would this actually work because I think it would. You could just tie these chains nice and tight and then latch them to the side using uh, the notches I put on the table. I toyed with the uh, how I wanted the tile laid out and I decided I wanted uh, beds at each corner of the tile with the levers at the fourth corner. Originally I was going to do four beds but, and the real reason I didn't do a fourth uh, or operating table or, or bed was because I didn't have the appropriate beads. I didn't have four beads, I had three. <laughs> so that's why I only did three, uh, but I still like the look and I think uh, the levers is the fourth corner on the tile really works out just fine. Uh, now for the next tile. So one tile is going to be my operating beds. The next tile is going to be a couple of tables with some accoutrement <laughs> that, uh, that go with the lab idea and concept. Uh, here you can see I'm carving out a small little scalpel with the bit of a toothpick. And we're going to check the zombie's hand for scale. I'm really liking how that turns out. I end up making a few more tools like this, uh, a larger knife and even a uh, like a cleaver out of a popsicle stick. And then I remember I've got all these amazing bits from the zombies uh, that I created earlier. So you can see I've got a gut pile, I've got some dismembered heads, and I'm going to put these, oh, and I've got some hands as well. And I'm going to put these all down on the table and just cover them in blood and grime and filth here a little later. You can see the cleaver I made out of a craft stick. What do you think? Convincing? I hope so. I end up finding a couple of weapons in the zombie pack. 
and cutting the hands off of them and using them on the other table as well. From an earlier video, I showed you how to make potions from uh, Q-tip cylinders and, uh, and toothpicks. I made up a whole bag of them. I mean, they were so quick and simple. I'm gonna put a link to that video up there, so if you've missed it, please check it out. And I'm just gonna fill the table with some potions. I also have a bag of books that I uh, made a while ago. I'm gonna grab a couple, glue them down on this table here. This one's all set. Uh, I'm really pleased with this piece here. It's like a, uh, a cart, and it's got a zombie kind of chained up and the, the doctor is kind of like experimenting on uh, exactly how dismembered can the zombie get and still be animated. Um, I really like the idea and concept of some poor undead soul all strung up and chained up being experimented on. Pretty horrific to be perfectly honest and uh, definitely sets the, uh, the doctor apart as a villain right away. Uh, a little silver to paint the metal accents. Normally I do a gun metal, but I really wanted the silver to kind of pop off a bit. Probably should have done a uh, second coat, but uh, I was in a rush to get this done. I have big plans for October, and boy, I'm hoping I can pull it all off. <laughs> I'm going to paint my zombie bits spring green. They don't match the paint scheme of my zombies, but I wanted these bits to really pop out. Uh, I wanted the, the bits of color, the green limbs and head and whatnot. I really wanted these things to pop out. So that's why I went with spring green. Then I'm going to go in with the flesh uh, and do a pink parfait. And then it's on to the checkerboard, which was uh, quite time consuming, but I actually enjoyed doing it. I put some music on and just went to work coloring uh, every other square tile in vanilla white. Now to complete my white and black shiny checkered floor, I'm going to hit it with some gloss Mod Podge. And this is just going to uh, create that high gloss, just waxed um, hospital floor look. Now the fun part begins. I get to pull out all my washes and, and paints and just start to weather, grime, and make this la these two laboratory tiles just look completely disgusting. I'm gonna start with uh, Speed Paint Palette Bone, go over my green zombie parts with it. Uh, I'm gonna turn to the uh, Speed Paint Red, hit my, uh, my gut piles with it, uh, and then just start making it drip from the head and the arm pieces. And this is where I really start to create my blood flows towards the drain. I'll dab it on and then I'll have it um, trace the cracks of the tile floor and slowly work through the cracks towards the grate and then drain into the grate. This was so much fun to do incredibly expensive now that I look back at the paints I was using and the amounts. <laughs> I probably should have uh, watered down a craft paint, but <laughs> I was having so much fun. Uh, so I'm going to say money well spent. <laughs> was, it, this was a blast, absolutely coating these tiles in, uh, in gore and grime. Hey, if you're, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's that time in the video. <laughs> If you're liking this video, how about you smash that like button for me? I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like that, uh, like this, please hit subscribe, um, and that'll make sure you get notifications and thing like uh, things like that for when I put future videos out. I've got a subscribe star, um, which would give you access to my pen and paper game for just ten dollars a month. That would uh, be amazing and really help the channel out. I've got uh, a merch store and uh, Amazon affiliate links down below. All of that stuff really helps me out, so thank you so much. Now that I've got my blood flow down with the red speed paint, I'm going to go in with uh, uh, Seraphim Sepia. Sepia Seraphim? <laughs> Serium, ah, there it is. You can see it. <laughs> it's the yellowish wash, and I'm going to go along the edges of the blood flow 
and uh, and just kind of dirty up the floor around it and then do some spots on a lot of the steel. I'm gonna start working in kind of a rust effect. I'm gonna pull my brown wash, uh, Athrax Earth Shade, I believe, from Citadel, and uh, and just start dabbing this all over near the bloody areas, near the rusty areas. Uh, this is just gonna lay down a nice brown grime and 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 grossness, and uh, I want I want it to look like not only is this fresh blood, but there's been blood over and over and over again draining uh, in similar ways uh, to this grate over and over and over again. Then I'm gonna grab Typhus Corrosion. This is an effects paint from Citadel. Do they call their paints effects? What do they call them? Technicals, I think. This one's gonna ray, uh, lay down this uh, brown with a little bit of uh, texture to it a little like a fine fine sand and when you dry brush over the after it dries and you hit it with a nice uh, orange dry brush this stuff here it's going to uh, pick out all the bits of texture and really make the corners and things uh, really apply a great rust effect and that's what I've done and then finally I, uh, I pull out my Army Painter glistening, uh, glistening blood effect paint and I just go absolutely nuts. I go over all of the trails, uh, splash it all over the uh, body parts on the tables and stuff. I really let loose with the blood effect. I mean, what's, what's the point if you're not going to get bloody crazy in this, uh, in this dark evil lab? And here are some shots of the final work. I'm absolutely pumped with how it turned out. And uh, hopefully you're super excited for the rest of October. Let's check it out. And the doctor figure with these close-ups. <laughs> so pumped with these tiles. And I feel like I kept them um, at a certain technical level that they would work in a uh, in a fantasy campaign, which is where I'm going to utilize them, or they would work in a sci-fi setting, as my walls would suggest. You can see the doctors, zombies, other experiments from the past milling about the gray area there. And is that the captain and Tinley trapped on those beds? Oh man, I think I'm going to have to tune in and find out what's going on. <laughs> Thank you so much everybody. Thanks for watching. Until next time, like each other. Love each other and craft on. <laughs>